My name is David Andre, and in this video, I will show you how to build your own AI agent only using code without utilizing any of the famous agent frameworks. Now, the first thing we need is Olama. This will let us do it locally. That way, we don't give OpenAI any info and we don't have to pay for any APIs. So go to olama.com and simply download it. This will take like 20 seconds. After that, open up a terminal and type Olama run llama free of course i'm going to be using the new llama free model because uh, it's the best open source model out there and this is the 8 billion version by default so as you can see for me um, it already lets me chat with the model so who are you and it will say i'm a llama blah 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 so for the first time this will not happen because you need to download the model and if you go to olama and click on models obviously we have llama free right here and as you can see, the 8 billion version is 4.7 gigabytes. So it will take like 20 minutes inside of here to download. But once that happens, you are good to go. And this only you only have to download the model once, obviously. By the way, quick tip, if you type slash buy, you end the chat session. So, okay, that way you don't have to kill the terminal every time. So now that you have Llama 3 installed, we have to go to VS Code, open up a new empty python file i called it private underscore agent dot py and that's because i want to build this agent to be completely private and this is something you cannot do with chat gpt obviously because everything you send into chat gpt open ai trains on the first thing we need is to import olama but even the before that we have to go to our terminal and actually install olama which is very simple just do pip install olama and by the way i already coded this so that's why i'm checking my second monitor Olama.chat. Now we have to set the model. In our case, is Llama3 and messages. So you have to get to formatting, right? And obviously, we set the role user and the content. And okay, this is actually usable. And we can actually test whether we get the output print, spawns, messages, content. But we have to remove the zero. We have an error. Oh, yeah. So this is a message. So it's singular. Okay, let's see. And we can actually look into our task manager to see our GPU working hard. So um, this could potentially work. And it does. Indeed, we have Llama3 giving us an output. By the way, all of the code from this video, as well as all the prompts, will be linked below the module inside of my community. So if you want access to all the code, as well as all the code from previous videos I made and future videos that are coming, then make sure to join. Plus, if you join in the next three days, you will get a personalized AI plan made just for you. So that sounds interesting. Make sure to join. Now let's continue. We have built uh, Olama successfully. If you did just this step, you're already ahead of 99% of people who have no clue how to run LLMs locally. But we want to turn this into a multi-agent team. Let's first load this TXT file. And this will let us load the file and save it um, as file and save it into the data variable. So this is the Python way you load files with open sensitive data in the read mode. You know, we don't want to change the file, so we don't want to write in it. Then we save the contents of it into our data variable, which will let us use that variable inside of prompts. We actually also want to check whether the file was loaded successfully, right? And this will just give us more information. So that way, when we're running, we get a little bit more info. Because without that, you know, if we comment this out, um, we're in the dark and like building agents when you're in the dark yeah it's not not the best right so the more debugging statements the better obviously if you want to put this into production then you remove all the print statements or like only keep the necessary ones but when building I mean, it almost never hurts having more of the steps printed out that's why i'm going to be plentiful with the print statements so now let's set the first prompt or our agent right because right now our prompt is this and um it's much better to set it as a variable and then just put it into here rather than trying to do everything inside of this uh, response function so very simply we just set a variable prompt 01 and we assign the following string and the reason i do f string is that way i can just reference the data variable inside of the string right so I do F and then this loads the entire 
know, Andre Karpafi, um, I mean, not the entire thing, but like the entire text. So it loads it, and then I do uh, four hashtags, which is a delimiter, which this is, by the way, one token. Oh, actually, it's one token in the ChatGPT tokenizer, but I'm not sure in Llama 3. Either way, it set, separates the text, which is the important part, right? So it separates the data, the TXT file, from our prompt. And we say, from this text, extract three interesting lessons about large language models, LLMs. And then we print out the prompt. And the reason I want to do that is to make sure that um, everything happens successfully. Now, honestly, this print you would definitely remove because it's going to be very long. It's, it's going to contain the entire TXT file. So, um, yeah, we need to remove that. And then this one keeps us like informed that uh, LLM is working, right? So look at this. Look at this. So at the start, we have followed this successfully. So we have some information. Then we get the prompt agent 01. And we see the prompt of the agent. And we get the entire TXT file. And at the end, this is our prompt. From this text, extract three interesting lessons about the LLMs. Then generating text. And then it generates the text, right? Okay, beautiful. So, to be honest, I don't think we have to print this one. We can probably comment these two li comment these uh, lines out, keep them backed up in case anything goes wrong. Now, uh, obviously, we have to change this, right? Because uh, again, we're not even using the prompt, and this is, um, yeah, I mean, we we have, we have to change this. So now we need to get the response from our agent, and I split this into two agents. Honestly. Uh, if you listen to my podcast with VRSEN, you will know that you should always start just with one agent. But I wanted to show you how to build a multi-agent team from scratch using just code, none of the AI agent frameworks. So uh, the first agent I decided to do is an extractor. So it takes the sensitive data. This could be whatever. Again, obviously, this isn't sensitive. This is just a transcript. But it could be, I don't know, records of customers. It could be your own therapy, I, I, I don't care, right? Anything private that should not touch a GPT and should not be trained upon. So the extractor will get the three main lessons about LLMs. So all we have to do here is, first of all, I'm going to do response 01 because we'll have a second agent. Actually, this is uh, what I did. It's just a very bad thing. What you want to do is highlight it and press F2 and rename it like this. <laughs> that way all the uh, instances of that variable rename. So, um, yeah, we have to change this and very simple. We just delete the string and we put the prompt there, right? Prompt 01. And now we're just using this variable we've named inside of the agent. So it's much more concise and just good practice overall to use variables. So, okay, we have, uh, we have the prompt, we have our agent. The next step is to simply set the prompt for the second agent. I mean, we want two agents, so we have to build the second agent as well, right? So, let's, let me do a comment. Set the prompt for the second agent, yes. And, okay, so this is actually really good. So, yeah, this is a bit more uh, complicated, right? So, it's the same idea. We have an F string with a variable inside and then a del delimiter and then our prompt. So explain this to the user in a simple, clear and engaging way. Be concise. Very good. But this part, let me explain this, right? So we get the response for, we don't get it. Um, oh, by the way, we don't need to print this here. I think, yeah, uh, this was just to showcase it, right? So we can comment this out as well. But yeah, we get it in this format, right? So this is a list and we have to get the content from the messages. So I think this is a list within a list. So yeah, we have to, basically these are indexes of this list. So we have to access the message and then we have to access the content of that message. And that's just the raw text, which is what we want. And we feed that raw text into the prompt of our second agent and add a bit more explanation. That way it's actually acts like a teacher agent, right? So, okay, this is good. But now we're missing the agent. We need to, we need to create a second agent. 
And honestly, we can also do the debugging here because this is going to be much more concise than the pre uh, first one because here we are loading still in the prompt is the entire txt file. Here it's going to be already filtered through the first agent. Okay, we, we we're going to add this as well. Simple debugging. And now get we need to get a response from agent number two, which is a teacher in my case. In your case, it could be anything. Again, start with one agent and don't just, you know, like if you have a speck of creativity, you can see the possibilities you can build with this locally on your computer with no, like you don't rely on any frameworks. By the way, I do recommend using agent frameworks. This is just to show you that it can be built from scratch and it's not that hard. And again, think about the problems you have, the specific problems you have and build it for that. Don't, don't just redo what I'm doing, right? Like, this is not a super useful use case. I'm obviously, like, you can still uh, teach yourself stuff faster, but there are use cases that you need and start building that, you know, for that use case. So, like, by the way, this is a tip for any tutorial. Always try to do it for your own personal project rather than what's in the tutorial because you're just going to be more incentivized to do it and you're going to get more value out of it. So what I did is basically I pressed tab and because I have a GitHub Copilot extension, it looks at my code and sees that, okay, I did this and I probably want to do the same because it set the pattern, right? So this comment and after that, it came this piece of code. So again, everything is the same. Olama.chat, model llama free and then messages, role user and then content, we do this prompt. So literally same principle, right? And honestly, now we just need to print out the results. So agent number two, response, and then we give it the response. And again, access is the same way within messages, within context. So let's save it and let's run it. I load successfully generating response. Okay. And it's honestly kind of crazy because this is llama free 8 billion, like 8 billion parameters for a model to be, to be this articulate and understand what's going on. It's kind of crazy. I mean, we really are living in the future. So if you want to learn more about AI agents, then make sure to join the community. Here you will find a seven module workshop on how to build and deploy AI agents that will teach you everything step by step. Plus the price is going to increase soon. So if you want to take AI seriously, make sure to join now. See you inside.